Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome once again to another episode of The Cider Drinker. And today, I have got the second of the three Irish craft ciders that I bought back from me, um, with me, from Dublin. Um, as you can see, I'm all uh, snuggled up in my um, cosy old uh, dressing gown because, well, it's a little bit uh, late in the evening now, but I thought, well, I've already done a cider review today. And, as I said, it's the weekend. I might as well go and do another one. So, what is this Irish Craft Cider that I'll be doing today? And is it going to be any better than the other one that I did before the uh, Falling Apple Medium Gravity? Well, we're going to find out now. Because today, I'm going to be reviewing Dan Kelly's Cider. Um, Irish handcrafted from the Boyne Valley since 1962. Made with our own hand-picked apples. Um, so yeah, I've actually been uh, following uh, Dan Kelly's for quite a while and I've, I've wanted to um, try their cider route for a long, long time, but obviously I've never had the chance to do it because, well, Irish craft ciders are not really that easy to get a hold of in the UK, apart from <sighs> Bulmers and Magnus, but, well, we'll forget about that, shall we? Anyway, let's see what it says on the back. The traditional Irish handcrafted cider. Our great-grandfather, Dan Kelly, drove the Enterprise steam engine. I'm assuming that is why there is a steam engine on the front of the bottle there. Uh, he passed daily through our orchard, where his favourite cider was crafted from hand-picked apples and natural wild yeasts. Sadly, Dan and his engine are long gone, but our cider, and the way it's traditionally made, remains unchanged to this day. So, that's always uh, good to hear. Um, this is, uh, again, quite uh, a low ABV. This is a uh, 4.5% and, as you can see, comes in 500ml uh, bottles. Any other range will be in the description below. Um, this is a natural product and will change slightly from season to season. That's always good to hear. Um, ingredients, apple juice wa and water. That's it. That is all you're getting. No sugars, no added sweeteners, no added flavourings or colourings. Just 100% apple juice and, well... Well, a touch of water, actually, so not quite 100% apple juice, but nearly there. May contain sulfites, but that's all you're getting. Um, so, yeah, uh, Dan Kelly's from the Boyne Farm Fruit... Uh, Boyne Grove Fruit Farm in Drogheda in Ireland. I hope I pronounced that right. Well, I am looking forward to trying this one. This sounds really, really traditional. So, let's get the top off. There we go. And uh, see what I make. Whoa! Oh, ho, ho! That was close. Okay. Um, well, it's a good job I had my glass handy, doesn't it? Jesus. <sighs> right. It's a lively one, isn't it? Jesus. Um, wow. Didn't realise it was going to do that. <laughs> Outtake! Yeah! Uh, but it's... It's completely gone now. Look at that. Bobbles have completely disappeared. It's like it never happened. We'll forget about that. Let's go in for the whiff test now. <sighs> um, apologies for the uh, slight cut there, guys. Uh, my cat just suddenly decided to climb up on my kitchen worktop, which it's never done before. Um, I think it's getting a bit too adventurous for its own liking, so I had to um, tell it off. Anyway, where was I? I was going in for the whiff test, wasn't I? Let's go in. Hmm. There's, uh, there's not a lot, actually. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not getting a lot at all. Right, I think it's going to have to be uh, an instant pour, me thinks. Right. Uh, once again, I'm using my uh, pure hopped cider glass here. Lovely, uh, lovely old um, chalice here, and not of the uh, Belgian cedar kind, that's for sure. There we go. Is it going to be as lively in the glass? We'll see. Don't think there's any um, sulfites. There we go. Let's get that all in. Boom. Ha ha. Lovely stuff. Right, going for the old colour test, and as you can see, um, actually no, despite it being such a, a a violent opening, it's actually quite lightly carbonated, as you can see. And uh, really, it's actually got a slight uh, haziness behind it as well, which is always good to see. And um, yeah, dark amber, um, r really, really deep amber colour, actually. Um, yeah, looks really, really nice in the glass. So, do we get any more smells? Hmm, not really. It's all, uh, being very subdued. There was a slight hint of something there. 
Slight hint of sourness, actually, but very, very vague. I'm hoping it's going to all be in the taste then, so, uh, well, let's find out, shall we? Cheers, guys, and here's to Dan Kelly's Cider, handcrafted in Ireland. Cheers. Mm, well, that was a bit different. Let's go for a second opinion. Wow. Lovely, lovely um, initial tastes there. Um, quite, quite tart on the initial taste. It's got that... It kind of reminds me of Guatkin's style of cider. It has... Um, uh, the way that I describe Gorgon, which sounds absolutely awful, is it's got like a nail varnish remover sort of taste to it. It sounds absolutely awful, but it's kind of like, kind of sour, kind of tart and things like that. Um, but it, it's really, really nice. Um, let me get uh, another one. Hmm. Hmm. Underneath all this, it's uh, got a bit of um, a sweetness behind it, almost like uh, a chewy toffee, or uh, a little bit of uh, a little bit of treacle uh, in amongst that. Uh, a little bit, maybe even a, a touch of like um, like brown sugar, uh, like the uh, the muscovado style sugar, um, just underneath all this, which gives it a nice little um, bitter sweetness behind it. Um, sadly, these tastes aren't really lasting that long, although the aftertaste is quite nice. You get in this really lovely, again, um, sort of like treacly, toffee-style aftertaste, and it's, um, you know, yeah, definitely, especially on the um, the back of my tongue, could really um, um, get that aftertaste, definitely. And um, it's got a sort of a, a light sort of texture behind it, which makes it quite easily drinkable. I mean, it is 4.5%, so it is going to be quite easily sessionable anyway. But, uh, Oh, I wish this uh, this sort of thing was like on our supermarket shelves. Um, aside from the, you know, the big Irish cider producers who I won't mention their names, I would love to have this uh, on their shelves. Apart, um, except um, what's what's the word I look for? Basically, I'd love to see this on the supermarket shelves and not that other crap that we've actually got over here, which is a bit disappointing. Anyway, let's go for a final taste before a final verdict. Hmm. Yeah, really nice, very pleasant. Um, uh, the only downside that I could probably see is that uh, I would like um, maybe the taste to linger around a little bit more, uh, but I think it's one of these ciders that, you know, it is sessionable, and so they've tried to make it as sessionable as possible, uh, which means, like, you know, the tastes are there, but you do need to keep on drinking it to kind of appreciate them. But what we... Uh, what tastes there are, are really, really lovely, and they do complement each other really well. Um, so if you are in um, Ireland, I mean, I got this uh, in Dublin, but I'm sure you can get it um, in other places in Ireland as well, I would highly recommend you go out and seek a bottle of this, because it is really, really nice. For a final verdict, Dan Kelly's Cider is going to get a 7 out of 10. Um, I can't honestly remember how much I paid um, for this bottle. I think it was something like €3.20 or something like that, but I know, um, I think prices in Ireland are a little bit more expensive than um, in the UK, um, but I'd say it's definitely it was definitely worth that price. If I uh, ever went back over there, I would definitely um, seek out another bottle of this because it was really, really lovely. So there we go, another episode of The Cider Drink for you guys. I hope you liked it, and as usual, I will be back with another delicious and tasty cider soon. Until then, I am going to go and finish off this lovely glass of Dan Kelly's cider, so take care guys, until next time.